Good morning, Mount Rivers Church. Good morning. If you are a newcomer, we want to say welcome home and welcome to our family. We're going to have a great time. This morning we are launching our, our Christmas series, a two-part series. Today begins a Christmas story. So, I want to open up today with a question. And that question is, what is Christmas? What is Christmas? Now... For me, growing up, I, I have always really enjoyed Christmas. Misty thinks that I am uh, a Scrooge. Because when it comes to buying the gifts for other people, I'm extremely stingy, very cheap. And I like making money, but I don't like spending it. And uh, But I like giving. I'm a giving person, but, but when the rubber meets the road and we're like up all night on Black Friday, and I'm, I'm, I'm like three espressos in, and my eyes are like this, and they're bloodshot, and, and she, all I see is the credit card, just not credit card, but like debit card, and, and all our money leaving us quickly in one night. And, and so I get a little grumpy, and I get a little scroogey. But to me, Christmas is uh, growing up Christmas to me, well, I did enjoy it. I've not always been a Scrooge. Um, have not always been real stingy because I haven't always had any money to spend. So now I just have a little bit more money and, and uh, not that I have a lot, but it, it leaves our fingers fast when buying presents for people. So if you are in our center of influence, you're probably going to get something because she, she is a shopping freak maniac and she loves, she loves to shop. She loves to spend money. So I'm a bit of a Scrooge. I do apologize. Christmas growing up for me, maybe I'm a little old-fashioned. I love being Crosby. I'll just tell you straight. I don't care what you think. I love you, but I love being Crosby. And I like chestnuts roasting on an open fire. And I like, I like movies, White Christmas. How many of you guys in the room? White Christmas people? Yes? Yes. Really? Some of you are not. I'm very disappointed. Uh, great movie, right? I love the snow. I, I, I love I love, I love, love the food that comes with Christmas. I love food, right? Amen? I like Christmas lights and hot cocoa. And I love, love the movie Polar Express. How many of you guys like Polar Express? Yes. I love it. So uh, a few years ago, right, maybe more than a few years ago, it's probably like nine years ago, eight or nine years ago, I don't know, my kids, I got the movie for them, but it ended up being for me because I fell in love with it so fast. And then in the scene where, where all of the, the, the servers bust out, hop, hop, hey, we got it, hop, hop, hot chocolate, here we go. I would bust through the door with hot chocolate. I would leave the room right before the scene, I'd go make some hot chocolate and come busting through the doors and my kids would freak out. They would love it so much. Christmas is cool, right? I remember one night, I was, I was, I couldn't sleep, it was Christmas Eve, my, my brother was in town, he was in my bed and I was on the floor. I don't know how that worked out. Now that I think about it, that was really wrong, by the way. And, and man, Rudolph was, was, he was it. And, and I remember waking up and looking out my window and I saw a red light in the sky. I freaked out! I woke my brother up. I was like, wake up, wake up, man, Rudolph, Rudolph, look out the window. What, 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 what's the matter with you? You're not trying to get a good night's sleep in your bed. You're waking me up. It's very inconvenient. He looks out the window. There's a water tower. It had a red light on it. And apparently it was there every night. I, I didn't know. Um, I was very excited about Christmas. And then getting up that morning, I would wake everybody up in the house. I was so excited to go and just rip open all those gifts. Man, it was crazy awesome. I love Christmas. Now, from the spiritual side, or maybe the religious side, or, or church, uh, I, I kind of grew up in, 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 in an identity crisis because my dad was Irish Catholic and my mom was Southern Baptist, and I didn't know what the heck I was. <laughs> We just kind of met in the middle and they ended up going to like a spirit-filled church. So I, I was all over the place. Christmas services were pretty awesome. You know, I didn't know whether to go to Mass or to go, I don't know what to do. But it was cool. I loved Christmas growing up. It was about so many things. But the question is, what is Christmas? All those things are great, right? I love Christmas lights. They're beautiful. Um, they originate from a, a pagan tradition of lighting the dark, <laughs> but you didn't know that. <laughs> uh, we, we put up these beautiful lights and we risk our lives to put up the lights. 
on an icy sloped roof. It's not very bright. Let me break in and tell you a funny story. Brad and I came home from work the other night, and it was dark, because now it gets dark early, right? And as we're driving down the lane, I can see lights outside of my home, which I know that neither one of us climbed a ladder and hung any lights outside the house. We didn't do any week. of that. Last week. This was just last week. And as we got closer and closer and closer, this giant blue spruce tree that is huge outside of our home is totally lit up. And I'm like, what happened? Who? How? How did that happen? And then all of a sudden, like, as we get really close, we see like these little heads hiding everywhere. Oh my word! The kids had just got home a little bit before us and they got out the Christmas decorations, got a ladder, and decorated the tree to surprise us. And because they couldn't completely reach it super high, you should see the job. They like took the lights, I think, and swing. <laughs> and wherever they landed, they lit them up, man. And it was on one side. It wasn't all the way out of the tree. It was just, it was just up and over and down with, with, mind you, interior lights. <laughs> Yes, not meant for the outside. So, we so, didn't have the heart to tell them, like, I'm glad to plug in. You gotta it's check all that down. So, if you come to my house, don't judge me, okay? <laughs> my tree is gorgeous! It is outside gorgeous. Outside of my home. It is. Pagan lights. For those pagan lights. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we love Christmas. But what is Christmas? What is Christmas? Christmas is about two things, alright? Christmas is about a name. And Christmas is a story. That's what Christmas is. All right. All of these things that we've mentioned are great things. All right. They're fun, and, and and we enjoy doing them and experiencing them. But all of these things are because of Christmas. But what is Christmas? Christmas is a name, and Christmas is a story. All right. If you have your Bible, we're going to look at how this is a name and how it's a story. Go to the book of Luke, chapter one, and we're going to start in verse. 30. And it says this. This is an angel who's now come to Mary and he says, don't be afraid, Mary. Now imagine if an angel who we know to be ginormously huge, we don't even know how big, but I'd say 9, 10 feet huge, with wingspans that are like probably the size of my whole body going that way. An angel shows up in front of you. Do you know what happened every time an angel showed up to somebody in the Bible? They were terrified. But what is interesting is every time an angel shows up and talks to people, they're always like, hey, it's okay. Don't be afraid. And I'm thinking I would be on my face thinking I was going to die. This is where Mary finds herself. And he says, don't be afraid, Mary. The angel told her, for you have found favor with God. What is favor? Favor is doing what's right in the eyes of God. And because of it, God pouring out his blessing and his prosperity over your life. This is where this young girl, now let me tell you, this, this has nothing to really do with where we're going today. I just want you to know, this was a teenager. Okay, and this Mary was not a girl who was 30 years old. This, which is still young, by the way. <laughs> 40, that's still young, by the way. But this girl was a teenager. She wasn't married, and we know that because in that day and time, they got married at the age of about 13. When you were about 13 to 14, that is how old they were when you were then married and you moved out of your father's home, you married your spouse, and you lived with them. I know your mouths are open. So Mary had not yet been married. She was actually engaged. So she was probably 13, maybe 14 years old. Now for all of you who thought kids couldn't do anything awesome for God, follow the rest of the story. So you have found favor with God. You've been doing what's right in the eyes of God. And because of it, His favor is being poured out on you, the angel said. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. God chose this young girl who had been caring enough to make God proud with her actions and her thoughts and her attitudes. And he said, I have chosen you. To bring the greatest gift to the world that anyone will ever know. I chose you. I chose you to do something incredible. You're going to lay your life on the line because you could die for what I'm asking you to do. But listen, this is what you're going to do. You're going to have a baby and you're going to name him Jesus. Christmas is about a name and that name is Jesus. Flip over in your Bible to Luke chapter 2. 
We're going to look at the other part. This is where the, the angel goes and brings another message. In verse 8, it says this. That night there were shepherds standing in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the radiance of the, glory, of the Lord's glory surrounded them. And they were terrified. Once again, we see that. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. What people? All, all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah of the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. The name is Jesus and the story is good news. That's what Christmas is. All the other cool things that go along with it, the shopping and the lights and the Christmas candy and the, the Christmas cookies and all the traditions that our families have and going out and seeing the Christmas train, all these things are awesome. But you know what we do so often? Is we fill up the entire Christmas season with all this craziness and chaos and we're stressed out and we're overwhelmed and we're staying up all night and on the 24th we're wrapping the zillions of presents we couldn't even afford to buy for people we don't see, even buy. See, see, sorry. I sorry. only buy for people I like, so sorry. if you don't get one, I'm just kidding. That's me. <laughs> I know. You buy all the things and get caught up in all this craziness and there's More like nothing. More than one grinch in our family. We get all caught up in all the craziness. And we sometimes forget. I mean, how many of you know that today is the 13th of December? Do you know that? Can anybody do me the math? 25th minus 13 leaves us with what? 12. 12. So we said 14. I think it's 12 if I do my math. Is that right? <laughs> I'm getting nervous in front of everybody. Like, I can't do math. 12 days until Christmas. How many of us have really focused in, for real, on the fact that this season is all about a name? That's Jesus. And it's all about a story of bringing good news. You see, the angels came to deliver a message. The angels came to share a story, and that story was Jesus. But you know what began to happen at that moment? Is then that story began to change. And that story then became about the shepherds. And it became about their new name and their new story. And you know what's amazing is 2,000 years later, we stand on a stage today. And pastors all over the world stand on stages this month and we tell about a name and we tell about a story. We tell about the name that changed our name and gave us a new name and we tell about a story that changed our story and changed and resurrected our life and gave us hope. Christmas is about a name and Christmas is about a story. So what is the good news? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Christmas is a story. The story is the good news of who Jesus is and what He has done for us. That's what Christmas is. We all we all like a good hero story, right? We were just talking about this last night at the parade. How I many of you guys went to the, the Grove Christmas parade? It was totally awesome. Yes, we loved it. And and we were hanging out with a family in the church, and they were next to us, and, and we were just talking and having a good time. And we were talking about how um, I was being made fun of because all I've watched is chick flicks since the day I got married because my life came to an end the day. <laughs> no, in a good way, kind of. I mean, we're going to be doing a marriage series in spring. It's going to be awesome. I've got some time to prepare for it. No, but but my life, you honestly, husbands, you lose your life, all right? It's over. You're done. You are done. It goes both ways. It does. It goes both ways. So, I have not seen a great man flick, right, in a really long time. I don't even remember what action or adventure... Never heard of a man flick. I, don't I just made that, that up. Yeah. I don't remember what a good adventure movie even looks like or sounds like because I have been banned, people. I have been banned from good movies. But I'm not going to go on and on about that. We all do like a, a, a hero's story, right? 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 If you were a superhero, who would you be? I just want to know. What was that dog movie you watched the other day? What are you pointing at me? That superhero dog movie? Matt. 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 That was totally an awesome superhero movie. Matt. Is, okay. Matt. Okay. You can be Matt, babe. There wasn't any blood. There wasn't no blood. That's the best kind of superhero No, it's not. It's a dog. It's not a superhero. It's a good movie. It's okay. It's a good movie. Good movie. Good movie. But it's not a hero movie. I mean, not like superhero. Okay, so like Captain America is pretty awesome, right? How many of you guys like Captain America? 
are on three. Who's your favorite superhero? One, two, three. I couldn't understand a word he said. That was really weird. Did your mom ever we, teach you not to talk at the same time? <laughs> yeah. We all enjoy a really great heroic story, right? The thing is, is we're not going to find a more heroic story than the story of who Jesus is and what he has done. You understand, he did not have to leave heaven. Do you understand that? Do we understand that? He did not have to leave heaven and come down to earth and, 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 and voluntarily give himself as a sacrifice hanging on a cross for our sins so that we can have a real and life-changing relationship with Him that is contagious. He came from the top to the bottom so that we could go from the bottom to the top. God came down. We're talking about He left heaven and became a human being and endured life as we endure it. He endured temptation. He endured frustration. He endured heartache and pain and depression. And he, he cried and, and he sweat drips of blood on our behalf. He loved us so much. He gave himself for us that we wouldn't have to die in our sins, but we could be resurrected, not just in the spirit, but in life. We can leave this earth and go home and be with him in heaven forever. Because he is a hero. And that's his story. He came from the top to the bottom, so we could go from the bottom to the top. Christmas is a story of hope. It's a story of the good news of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So when you think of rescue, what do you think of? Let's give this illustration. Let's give the illustration of a life ring. All right, I want you to check this out. You guys know what a life ring is, right? Now, these are pretty, and they usually hang on a fence, and we hardly ever see them used. But they have more of a purpose than just hanging on the fence, right? They're used to rescue the drowning. And if you have received Jesus Christ into your life as your Savior, and you have a real and life-changing relationship with Him, right? You have been drawn in by that ring. And you have been saved and set free. And you have a hope and a future in Him forever and ever and ever and ever. And that's great! But my question for you is, if and when you go to heaven, who are you taking with you? That's what the good news is all about. See, it's one thing to just know that you're saved, that you have that relationship with Jesus, but how selfish is it of, of us, of you and me, to just stay saved and be happy and satisfied with that and not give any concern at all for the people that might be drowning around us? The good news is about taking that life ring that is Jesus and casting it out to those that are around us in our lives. And I'm telling you, God has strategically placed people around you in your life because He's expecting you to engage. He's expecting you to throw the ring out to them. You think Pastor Brad and Pastor Misty, do you think it's, it's just our responsibility to win this entire community and anybody and everybody we can possibly reach in cyberspace? Do you think it's just it's our responsibility to do that? That is not how God designed this thing to work. Our job is to equip you to program. Each and every one of us in this room are called and you've been qualified to throw the ring. There are people that are dying and drowning in their sins every day around you and around me. My question is, are we throwing them the ring? Listen to this, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. I love this passage of scripture. It says... Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, 
I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I want you to focus on that word go for just a second. That go, that, that word go, you can, you, can, you can sometimes go right over the top of that and not even have a clue how powerful the meaning of that word is. It's, it's way more than just what, what meets the eye. That word, it really means as you are doing what you do. Or as you are going about your daily life. That's really honestly what that word means. As you are doing your daily activities, your daily and weekly routine, make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them, the new disciples, to obey all the commands I have given you. Has it ever crossed your mind that Maybe God would want you to start a Bible study during, during your lunch break at work. Has that ever crossed your mind? Maybe God would, would just have you to, to take these invite cards, right? All through the parking lot. You know, you can come to us and you can request that we print way more. If you want a thousand, I'll print a thousand. If you want ten thousand, you better put them out. But I'll print you ten thousand. Has that ever crossed your mind? There's no limit to what God wants to do through you to spread the Christmas story to people who are hurting and helpless and hopeless. So Jesus is expecting you and He's expecting me to throw a ring to people who are hurting. And the question is, are you willing to do it? Right, you know, when you look at, if you'll throw back up that image, I want to show you something that's really important about the life ring. You know, if you just threw somebody a life ring without having anything attached to it, you might as well throw them a floaty and tell them good luck. Right? I mean, if somebody's in the middle of the ocean drowning, you throw them a life ring, there's something very important connected to it, and it's called that rope. Okay? So if you throw somebody a life ring, the rope is what helps you to do what? To pull them back in. To get them back to safety. Well, I want you to understand, if Jesus is that life ring, and that's the example we're giving you, He is the life saver. We can throw that ring to people who are drowning their sins, and they can grab on. But it's going to take us pulling them in. It's going to take those of you who have already been rescued. You see, if you've accepted Jesus Christ into your life, and you've asked Him to forgive you of your sins, and you're trying to live for Him every day, then you have been radically rescued. He said, well, I wasn't really caught up in that much sin. Well, you know what? The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if you were a murderer or if you have, you have barely done anything except for told your parents no, and that's a sin, and every two-year-old does it, right? No. No. So you're no. We were born into a world of sin. The Bible says we've all fallen short. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ, you have been radically saved. And let me tell you something. Radically saved people radically rescue other people. Did you hear what I said? You guys are dead out here. Radically rescue people rescue people radically. Why? Because we realize what Jesus has to offer. We realize what our life was like before Christ and what our life is like now. Do you realize we have the answer that the entire world, the entire population is longing for? And so often we go around in like a holy huddle, in like this little bubble, right? We just want to surround ourselves with Christians, people who think like we think and act like we can act and talk like we talk. But there's a world of people out there who are dying and who are hopeless and who are hurting. And God is expecting us to take this life ring, to take the story, to take the name, and to throw it out to people who are lost. Do you know that this time of year at Christmas is the best time of year to tell the story? The good news, the gospel message. Why? Because that's what Christmas is. You ever look at the word? Christ, mass. What's the first? Christ. It's an open door to tell somebody about Jesus. I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 3. It says this. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. What is that? It's the things that we want to do with our bodies and with our minds. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger.
Peter, just like everyone else. If you have a Bible and you don't mind writing in it, circle that word, that word anger and put drowning right next to it. If you, before you knew Jesus Christ, you were drowning in your own sin because the anger and wrath of God will be poured out upon those who have not received the gift of salvation. The anger of God. But you know what's amazing? It's the mercy of God. Do you guys know what the word mercy even means? Mercy means this. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. How many of you guys have ever broken the speed limit? You, okay, y'all know lying is a sin. It'll send you straight to hell. Okay, now, if how many of you guys have ever been pulled over speeding, and then you're praying you don't get a ticket? I'm right here with you, right? I mean, I'm praying like, oh, Lord, I wasn't paying attention. And your prayer life strengthens in yeah. those moments because you pray like you've never prayed before. I mean, somebody calls you on the phone wanting you to pray for their Aunt Myrtle because she has a toe ache. And you're like, yeah, oh, yes, bless you, Jesus. But when you are pulled over, you're like, oh, my God, I need you right now. <laughs> Intervene, part the heavens. Bring your angels down. Meet me here, God. Don't let me get a ticket. Jesus, man. Yeah. All right. So for, for those real. of you who have ever experienced real. that, and that dramatic. Why, why are you 48? <laughs> <laughs> if you've experienced that, if that officer looked at you after your sweat bullets has taken your insurance and your license and he went back and he set his little car doing what he does for a long time and you're, you're sweat bullets because you're like, how much is this going to cost me? Because man, it's high to He comes back to you and he looks at you and he says, sir or oh man, today I'm just going to give you a warning. You slow down, all right? Yes! Yes, sir! Heart, I have heaven as my home. How many, how many of you guys in this room have made that decision? 
for Jesus to live in your life. Amen. So, those of you who raised your hand, you are a rescue story. And Jesus, the life ring, is tied to you with a rope. And there are people around you that need that life ring. And they need you to throw it to them. I'll tell you a quick story. There was a, a young man in our church by the name of Brad. Not me. And uh, Brad and his mom, Tamara, came to this church for a while. And uh, along with some of the other kids, and they, they, they came, and they came for quite some time, and she got involved in kids' ministry. She started serving, and she just became a very familiar face. But there was something missing in the picture. And something missing was her husband, Will. And we would always ask, hey, so where's your husband? You know, what's, well, he's just, you know, he, there's no way that he would ever, ever step foot in church. I mean, it would be like a miracle if he would ever come to church. He's just real. He's got a lot of stuff he's dealing with and he's just not, it's just not his thing. So we're like, okay, you know, we're used to, we're used to that. So time went on, continuing, hey, hey, how's Will? How's your husband? Please, please, please pray for him. He just, he really needs God because they're growing in their faith, right? The rest of the family's growing in their faith and we're asking about Will. And where's Will? Please, let's let's pray for him. Please, 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 let's pray. And uh, we did we did a series called the Missing Link, and it was about what is an authentic man of God. What does he look like? What does he live like? And we were talking about the impact that fathers make on their on their children. How we're called as men of God to impact our homes with the glory of God and the leadership that God has given us. And Will and um, Bradley went home and he said, Dad, he said, I, uh, I God had already been dealing with Will, mind you. Because remember, we have a Holy Spirit who goes out before us and prepares the way. And, and his son, his son said, uh, he said, Dad, today's message, uh, I want you to hear it. Really, really cool. They've got it on, on YouTube and you can go online and we can watch it together. Will you watch it with me, and, and so he agreed. And they watched these messages together. And, you know, Brad wanted so bad for his dad to experience what he had experienced. He wanted him to experience Christ in a real way. So bad. I mean, you could just see it on all of them. But Brad was so compelled to have his dad watch these messages. And through those messages, right, it wasn't long after that, Will shows up to church one night. And we're like, I don't know who it was. And I said, who's, who's that guy with, with Cameron? What's going on? Who's that guy? That's, that's our husband. No, oh, oh. no, oh, that is awesome. And he was, he was, you know, he was a little standoffish. He was like, you know, you, he had that nervous look, you know. Church. <laughs> this is church. You know, I don't know about this. And, and over time, uh, Will came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Because uh, yeah, you give God a hand. Absolutely. Because his son was tied. <laughs> to the life in Jesus. And his son took it upon himself, took upon the responsibility that we all carry to throw the ring to his head. Because Bradley was no longer concerned about himself. He was concerned about those around him who needed what he now had. And that is what Christmas is. It is the story that we share about the name and the person of Jesus Christ. There is no greater gift 
that you can give any person during this Christmas season the eternal life in heaven. There is no gift greater that supersedes the awesomeness of eternal life. And you know the best part of it? For me at Cheapskate, it's free. <laughs> it's free. You don't have to spend any money at all to give somebody eternal life. The life ring is Jesus. The rope is tied around you. What you've got to do is throw it out to people. Right? So, radically rescue people. Rescue radically. You hear what I'm saying? I'm going to say it again, because only one person heard what I said. Radically rescued people, that's all of you that raised your hand, rescue radically. Because you care more about others and their eternity than you care about yourself. Which is what marriage is all about. That's why I only watch chick flicks. <laughs> Tell them. It's, it's about being selfless. That's, in essence, who Jesus is. Selfless. Selfless. Say it with me. Selfless. Say it. Selfless. It's not about me. It's all about me. It's all about them. That's who Jesus is. And that's what He wants you to be. Selfless. That's what Christmas is. This morning, if you'll all stand with us. I want you to just think about the Christmas story. We are 12 days out from Christmas, and then it will be on to New Year's and on to 2016, and life will just keep spinning, almost out of control. We have 12 days between now and the, the Christmas day that we celebrate to go out and share the message of hope that we have been given. And this morning, on every one of your seats, we put two invite cards every single week. But this week, we are going to challenge you with this challenge. Maybe you're shy. And maybe it would be really hard for you to walk up and to just talk to somebody. Because you don't even hardly do that anyway. Maybe you're a hermit and you never leave your house. But well, we're going to encourage you and challenge you to take these two cards. There should be two on every seat. Kids, you can get them from Kathy Kim at the end of your service. They weren't on your seats today. We're going to encourage you. We're going to pray over these cards before we walk out of here today. And we're encouraging every person to take two. And if every person takes two, we're going to put out almost 400 between Christmas Sunday morning. You can take them and you can put them anywhere. Take them to school. Take them to a restaurant. Put them right in the hand of somebody you really love and say, look, I want you to come with me next Sunday. It's going to be an awesome Christmas service. Our kids are performing. It's going to be incredible. Will you come? I'll pick you up. Write them. Get them here. Throw the life ring. Throw the life ring because radically rescued people will rescue radically. How hard is it to put two cards out? It's not hard at all. It's going to be one of the easiest things you've ever done. But yet somebody can get a hold of this card and their entire life for all eternity would be saved. You could be a hero because you'll save somebody from hell. Because you're willing to care more about someone else. If you will, bow your head with us this morning. In this place, I'm sure that there are people who, when I ask the question, who in here is saved and has a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus, there were some that were unable to raise their hands. And it's, it's you that we do this for. When I say this, I mean everything that you see, everything that you experience in these services are because of you. Because God loves you so much 
And because we love you so much and we welcome you in to the family of God, if you will come. Eternity is waiting. Heaven is really and truly your home. But you have to accept it. You have to receive the adoption certificate that God extends to you with the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, that was poured out on the cross of Calvary. And all you have to do is admit that you're a sinner, just like me, just like many of those in this room that you saw raise their hand earlier. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It's about believing that Jesus is who He said that He was and He is today. And it's confessing with your mouth that you want to live for Him according to His Word. And if you're willing to make that commitment today, and I hope that you are, you can have eternal life in Him. And it can start in just a moment as we pray. So what I want to do right now, you are why we do what we do. What I want to do right now, with all heads bowed, eyes closed, if you're in this place and you are unsure that heaven is your home and you want a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that is contagious, I want to give you an opportunity right now to receive him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count to three and on, on three, the number three, I want you to be honest with me, honest before God and raise your hand and we're going to praise a family right where you are. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Who are you in this place? Amen. Amen. Anybody else today? Anybody else in this house? Amen. Amen. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I love you. I thank you for Jesus. I know that I've sinned. I know that I've fallen short of the glory of God. I ask for you to forgive me. Cleanse me of my sin. Make me clean. Give me hope and a future. I believe Jesus is who He says He is. I confess with my mouth that He is Lord. I dedicate from this moment forward that I will live for God. According to the Word of God. Lord, surround me with the right people to push me to higher heights than you. Let your word be my favorite read. And let your house be my new home. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'll turn around and pick up your card that's in your seat or in your purse now, if you ever want to pick one up, we're going to pray over these cards that we're going to take out this week. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that you'll take the challenge to take these cards and put them out so that someone has an opportunity to come to the same house. I'll also add that uh, we are going to take this image. And we're going to post it on our Facebook page, uh, personally, on our personal pages, and then on the church's page. We want you to, to share, 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 share. Think about all of the center of influence that is represented in this room right now. Think about everybody that you know on social media. And we all add it together and, and post and forward these images and invite people to church. Imagine the life rings that can be thrown out through that. Simply awesome what God can do. Amen. If you got your car hold up in the air, we're going to pray. Father God, we thank you, God, that we have been radically rescued yes, by your son, Jesus yes, Christ. God, we did not take for granted what has happened in our own life. God, I pray this week, God, that we would take these cards out. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would go before us. God, wherever these cards may land, whoever's hands they, they are picked up by, God, I pray that you would begin to work in their life. God, I pray that they would be open to hearing the incredible story of Jesus Christ behind Christmas. God, I pray that next week, Father God, they would filter into this house. God, that they would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ that we have experienced. God, because we know that it's because of your love. God, while we were yet sinners, that Jesus Christ died in each of our places. God, let us be selfless this week and reach out and share this story and rescue 
radically those who are lost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.